What's up? I'm Vin, and today I want to go through the 2017 AP Calc ABNBC free response question number three. So let's get started. So for part A, we want to find the value of f of negative 6 and f of 5. And we have a graph of f prime, and we're told here that f of negative 2 equals 7. So for these questions, we have to use the area under the curve. And what I like to do ahead of time is find the area under each of these pieces. So notice this is a right triangle here, and it goes across four units and up two units. So if I do four times two is eight and divide by two, that tells me the area of this triangle is four square units. And then we have a semicircle with radius two. So I would have pi times the radius two squared divided by two, which is two pi, so that gives us the area of this semicircle. And then this triangle, the base is one, two, three, and it goes up two units. So I would do one half, 3 times 2, which is equal to 3 square units. So having all of these areas in place makes questions like this easier. But now, the trick is, how do we find f of negative 6 if we have a graph of f prime? Well, the idea is we have to do the antiderivative, or the integral of f prime. But the problem is we don't have an explicit function for f prime. We just have this piecewise function here. So what I like to do is, what we're trying to find here, I like to write on top. I want to know what is f at negative 6. And what I know is what's going on at negative 2. And then if we use the fundamental theorem of calculus, FTC1, that means we're going to do the antiderivative and evaluate it at the upper lower limits and subtract. So we would have f of negative 6 minus f of negative 2. So if we solve for f of negative 6, we would just add f of negative 2 to both sides. And this tells us f of negative 6 equals f of negative 2 plus the integral from negative 2 to negative 6 of f prime of x dx. Now the one catch here is that the upper limit in this case is less than the lower limit. So anytime that happens, I like to flip them and then just change this to a minus or just change the sign in front. So we'd have f of negative two minus the integral from negative six to negative two of f prime of x dx. The advantage to doing this is now you could just read the graph from left to right. So now I'm gonna mark off the x axis. This is over here at negative six. This is at negative two. This would be a positive 2, and then 3, 4, 5, this goes out. So now we just think about it. We, go, we could simplify this now. We could say that f of negative 6 equals f of negative 2, they told us, is equal to 7. And then we have minus. And think about what this means. The integral from negative 6 to negative 2 is the area under f prime from negative 6 to negative 2, which we already found is equal to 4. So this tells us f of negative 6 is just equal to 3. And now we could do this whole long-winded process again for this question. Or if we just reuse this idea, we could say, all right, this time I'm looking for f of 5. So f of 5 would be equal to f of negative 2 plus, and now I would have this time around the integral. Once again, we started at negative 2. And this time we're going up to 5 like this of f prime of x dx. And just know if this formula going right to it is too difficult you could always start it like this so we could always start from just this part here f prime of x dx and this would be f of 5 minus f of negative 2 and then solving for f of 5 would give us f of negative 2 plus this definite integral so now once again f of negative 2 is still equal to 7 plus but now i'm finding the area starting at negative 2 going all the way to 5 and there's a little bit of a trap here just be careful, that 2 pi is under the x-axis, so we have to treat it as negative. So we'll have negative 2 pi plus, and then we have to complete this. We're going from negative 2 and stopping at 5, so we have to account for the area of that triangle, which is 3 square units. So if we simplify this, 7 plus 3 is 10, we get 10 minus 2 pi is f of 5. For part b, we want to find on what intervals is f increasing. And anytime I hear f is increasing, my immediate reaction is to look for where is f prime of x greater than zero. And then I think about what do we have? We have a graph of f prime. So if I want to find out where is f prime greater than zero, I have to think about when is the graph of f prime greater than zero. And a graph is greater than zero when the graph is above the x-axis. So that means we're looking at this part here, which this goes out to negative two, this went all the way out to negative six, and then this portion here from two and going out to 5 like this. So let's just make that a little bit neater. So let's see here. So this part of the graph. But one thing to be careful with is that notice at this endpoint that at negative 6, the derivative is positive. 
it's not zero. But notice at two and five, the derivative is zero. So that means we're going to include the endpoint negative six, but we're not going to include the endpoints negative two, two, and five. So now we could write our sentence. We could say that f is increasing on these intervals because f prime is greater than zero on those intervals. Now, part C is probably the most involved part of this question. And when we want to find an absolute minimum or maximum value on a closed interval, we could use the closed interval method. And how that starts is that we find the critical points of f. So we're going to set f prime of x equal to 0. So we're really just looking for what are the zeros of f prime. And we have a graph. So we have zeros here, here, and here. There's three zeros at negative 2, positive 2, and 5. So this is the justification that us looking for the zeros of f prime is part of the process of finding the absolute max or min. And now what we do is we're going to make a table of values involving these x values. But I want to write what we had before. We had that the area of this triangle was 4 square units. The area of this semicircle was 2 pi square units. And the area of this little triangle was 3 square units. So if we make a table of values, for the closed interval method, what we have to do is we have to look for what are the critical points and the endpoints. So I always have to write in the endpoints negative 6 and 5. But now I write in the critical points negative 2 and 2. I'm not going to write 5 twice because it's also one of the endpoints. But this is sufficient enough. But now notice f of negative 6, we found this in part a. We already did this work. And if you look back from before, f of negative 6 was equal to 3 units. And for f of negative 2, they told us f of negative 2 is equal to 7 f of 2 we didn't find before but f of 5 we found f of 5 was equal to 10 minus 2 pi so the only thing that we would need to find here is what is f of 2 so this they were a little bit polite because sometimes you have to find all of them and it could take a little bit of time but if i want to find f of 2 i could use that idea from before again that the integral of f prime from negative 2 to positive 2 would be equal to f of 2 minus f of negative 2 by once again ftc1 so this tells me then that f of 2 is really equal to f of negative 2 plus the integral from negative 2 to 2 of f prime of x dx. And now if we work this out, f of negative 2 equals 7 plus, And the area from negative 2 to positive 2 is, be careful, it's, we're treating it as signed area. So it's under the x-axis. So we're going to say plus negative 2 pi like this. So this part of the table is going to give us 7 minus 2 pi. Well, now we just have to think which one of these values is the smallest. And if you think about it very, very carefully, well, 7 minus 2 pi is going to be bigger than 10 minus. I'm sorry, 7 minus 2 pi is definitely less than 10 minus 2 pi because you're subtracting 2 pi from a smaller quantity. But 7 is going to be bigger than 7 minus 2 pi. So it's really between these two. But what I think about for this step, because this is the no calculator section, is I do a really bad approximation of pi. Like pi is roughly 3.14. Let's say I just stop it here. So if I do 7 minus 2 pi like this, this is me doing 7 minus 6.28. And 7 minus a number bigger than 6 is definitely going to be less than 3. So the absolute minimum is going to be here. And the justification for our answer is in all the work that we just showed. We showed the closed interval method. So we could say here, therefore, the absolute minimum value of f is f of 2 equals 7 minus 2 pi. For the last part of this question, we either want to find these values or explain why they don't exist. So for this here, if we're trying to find f double prime of negative 5, what we need to do since we have a graph of f prime is we're going to look at the slope of f prime at x equals negative 5. And we're going to basically do the same thing for this. We're going to find the slope of f prime, but this time at x equals 3. So this is not something you would write on the AP test, but this is just giving you the idea we're going to go with. Because we have to take a derivative, but we have a graph. And anytime you want to take the derivative and all you have is a graph, you have to look at the slope. So let's go out to negative 5, which is over here. And notice if we go to f prime at negative 5, Conveniently, we have a straight line. And anytime you want to find the slope 
at a point along a straight line. You just have to find the slope of the line. So you could do this a number of ways. If you have really good eyesight, you could just count the rise over run. But let's pretend that you really have trouble seeing this. This is the point negative two zero at this location. I'll just make that a little bit neater. So that's this is going to be the point negative two zero. So we could find the slope f double prime of negative five. I just find the slope between those two points. So I could do the difference of their y values. I'll do two minus zero over negative six minus negative two. And this is going to work out to two over negative six plus two is negative four. So the slope here is going to be negative one half. Now, once again, if you just count the rise over the run, you'll be done much faster. But this is going to be fine for finding f double prime of negative five. This is just negative one half. Now, for the next part of this question, we need to repeat this process. Let's just make that a little bit neater. So the next part, we want to find the slope at x equals three. But notice right away that we have a sharp turn here. Now, you could consult with the rubrics on this one. but I think it's a little bit dicey if we just say f double prime of three does not exist. And if we say sharp turn, that would maybe get you full credit depending on who's grading. But if you want to be 100% safe, you have to think about the definition of differentiability. That f prime of a is equal to the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a over x minus a. But notice, we're applying the definition of differentiability not to find f prime. We're using it to find f double prime. So the only thing that would change here is that if we're going to throw in a double prime, then anything with a function is going to get an extra prime like this. So this would be the definition of differentiability for talking about f double prime as opposed to just f prime. So now, to show how do we know this limit doesn't exist, well, we could look at the slope along the left side. So here, we could say the slope, it's going up 2 over 1. The slope is 2. But along this side, we're going from the point 3, 2 to the point 5, 0. We're going down 2 to the right 2. So here, the slope is negative 1. So that's what's going to convince us here. So f double prime of 3 does not exist because the slope along the left side and the right side are approaching two different values. So if I just want to summarize this in one shot, well, which value are we approaching? We're approaching x equals 3. So we would say f double prime of 3 does not exist because, and now using the definition of differentiability, once again, we'll make this super, super precise. We could say because the limit as x approaches 3 on the left of f prime of x minus f prime of 3 over x minus 3 is not equal to the limit as x approaches 3 on the right of the same exact thing of f prime of x minus f prime of 3 over x minus 3. So this is, once again, the very textbook definition. It would maybe be OK to say sharp term, but if you really want to be safe for those questions where they ask you to show that the function is uh, not differentiable at a point, this is a really nice one to use. And this is like the fancy way of saying sharp term. OK, well, this is going to conclude this video on the 2017 AP Calc ABBC free response question number three. If this video was helpful, please like and subscribe. It really helps me grow the channel. And if you got any requests, just leave the topics you want me to cover in the comments section below. And thanks for watching.